Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. In the previous screencast in this playlist, we talked about the problem of data that is either entered or imported where both the first and the last and maybe the middle name are all in one field. And we discussed how to use queries and calculated fields to separate out the parts of a name into a query so that you could sort easily or merge easily by any part of the name. In this screencast, we're going to use that query so that any other queries, forms, reports that have a need to sort the contact name by last name can use that calculation. But before I show you how to use that query to support other objects in the Access Database, I do want to state that the best solution would be to fix this problem at the root level. The best solution would be to create two new fields in this customer's table for first name and last name for the contact and middle name if you want to store that too, of course. But sometimes you already have an application that's built with one field for contact name, so there's already a lot of forms built for that. Or you may be importing data where you have no control over how it comes to you. You just have to deal with it. So if that's the case, now that we've created that query, and I'll show it to you again, called separate string that takes that contact name and separates out the first name the middle name and the last name into three separate fields, you will often want to use that separate string query to support other queries, forms, and report. And I also want to point out again that the raw data is in that contact name field. And so if I change the raw data, Maria Anders to Maria Anderson, then her calculations on that data are going to change as well. And so that's the beauty of calculated fields, of course, is that they update as the raw data updates, and that raw data is in that customer's table. But let's go to create query design view, and let's add the customer's table. And I want to point out in the show table dialog box that you can also add queries to this query. And so we could add that separate string query to this query design view so that we could pull fields from the customer's table where the raw data lives, and also the separate string query where those calculated fields live, such as last name by itself. The problem, of course, is that you always want to connect your field lists, whether they be from a table or from a query, so that the records know how they're supposed to connect. And right now, we don't have a good field in the separate string query to connect these tables. Now, theoretically, we could connect them on contact name, but that would only work correctly if every contact name was unique and as we know, there are going to be people with the same name in this world that could potentially get into our database. So the only unique piece of information in the customer's table is the customer ID field. So before we can connect these two field lists, we really need to add the customer ID field to that separate string query. So let's go ahead and close this without saving it. Open up separate string in design view and add that customer ID as the first field. You don't have to add the unique or primary key field as the first field in your query or your table. It's just kind of common convention because it's so important. That is the unique identifier for each customer in your database. Now that we have that customer ID field in the separate string query, we're ready to have this query participate in the overall relationships of the database. And the reason we want to build the separate string query into the overall relationships design view is because we're probably going to want several queries, forms, and reports sorted on the customer last name. And instead of making that connection between the separate string query and the customer's table in every query, if we make that connection here in relationships, in design view, then as we're building the query, those two tables will already know how they're supposed to participate. So I'm going to drag the customer ID field from the customer's table to the customer ID field of the separate string query and create the connection. And it's really a one-for-one -one connection. One customer ID can be related to one customer ID over here in separate string. But now that they're created at this base relationships level, the performance of your database is going to be as good as possible. If you find yourself relating two tables or a table in a query or two queries or any field lists repetitively in a query design view, you know that you can improve the performance of that database. If you simply define the relationship in this relationship screen, 
Because now when I save this relationship screen and go to create a query in query design view, and I add that customer's table, and I add that separate string query, and I can do that by either dragging that separate string object in out of the navigation window, or I can double click it here in the show table dialog box. See, they're already going to know how they're going to be related. Yes, there are times when you do manually create a relationship between two tables in Query Design View because you're trying to find orphan records or you're trying to scrub data and you're not going to need to repeat that task. If that's the case, if it's a one-time effort, then relating the field list at the query level is appropriate. But if it's something that you're going to need for multiple reports, multiple queries, then it's far better to relate the tables and the queries as necessary in the relationships window for performance reasons. So now that we have these two field lists related, I can pull the company name, the contact name, the first name, the last name. I can sort ascending on last name. And I could also add other tables, you know, the orders table, the order details table, the products table, any other information that I wanted to know. And if I wanted to make sure that I had this information listed in alphabetical order on last name, see, I can do it now with this last name calculated field. I'm going to save this as sorted customer list. One last thing. I have to tell you this story. One time I had a potential client call me. And when I go into a new database, there's a couple things I always like to do. I like to pick through the tables and just see what kind of data they're storing. I like to go through all the fields to see how they've been set up. Have they been properly defined or are there some issues? For example, in the products table, I have real issues with this quantity per unit field because we have both numeric data and the units of measure in the same field, which means it's very difficult to calculate on the quantity piece of that information because they've shoved a number and a string all into one field. So I look for all of those things. What kind of data are they storing? Do they have any design problems? I'm always looking for the number of records that are in each table. And I had this client and I'm looking through their tables. I've got hundreds of thousands of records. And then the second thing I always do after examining the table data, just getting a sense of what they're storing is I come into this relationships window. It's database tools, relationships. And if they do not have any relationships set up, no wonder they're having performance problems. So in 2006, I took on this client with hundreds of thousands of records in each table. They had no relationships set up in the relationship screen. And they were looking at spending $100,000 on a new server and a new SQL server relational database and all new front end programming development. And I told them, I, I don't know if relating the tables properly will bring the performance to an acceptable level or not, but give me a couple days to scrub that data and relate those tables and let's see how it runs. And here we are over 15 years later, and guess what? They're still running on that same access database. They never did need upgrade to SQL Server and a new big server, as so many other consultants had told them. So the moral of that story is the relationships and the design of the relationships is absolutely critical to the success of the rest of the database. If this isn't right, stop your data entry. Don't build your application. Don't build your forms. Don't build your reports. This has to be right before all of the rest of that is going to run smoothly. And if this isn't right, you will have rework later. Now that we've got that separate string query involved in our overall relational database, we can now go ahead and store that entire contact name in that single contact name field as was given to us in this application, but break out the parts and use the different parts of that name, first name, middle name, and last name for sorting and merging purposes in any query form or report. Thank you.